Really, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises, honor, glories, was worship to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rocha, Kodash, the balance to the elders and the apostles. Shalakit. The balance to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, greetings and salutations to Akim, by the pushing and exhorting his word, magnifying this word in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahusha in truth and sincerity. Our Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Yahweh Shah being the only begotten Son, um, the firstborn of all creatures, Yahweh Shah, whom were ignorantly and some unfortunately willingly called Jesus Christ. Right, this is Jaquab out of the command of Great Millstone Atlanta Church. All right. Um, for lesson of exhortation, edification, to feed the sheep and the lambs of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. All right. So I wanted, wanted to discuss um, the value of uh, herbage, of, of herbs in the scriptures. All right. With a quick couple of precepts, you know, just to um, shine light upon the fact that, you know, the Lord has granted the resources of the earth naturally um, to replenish our bodies. Because remember, the scripture says Adam was made of the dirt of the ground. Adam means um, ground. All right. All right. So we, we were made of the of the soil. All right. Then that means the the minerals, the elements, the components that the that the soil is composed of, and the different you know uh, plants that come forth from the soil are there to put forth a balance and equilibrium, and to be a tonic for our body that we may live and have an abundance of life. All right, so I'm gonna start off with Genesis. All right, this is the book of Genesis, the first chapter and the 29th verse. And it reads, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. All right, so that, that goes into... What you know, blueberries, um, the blueberry plant, the um, mu different type of mushrooms, different type of sages, which is you know, mint plant, um, you know, different types of um, tree barks, you know, you got your yer yerba mate, and literally the list is infinite. <laughs> um, the Lord has granted us. Um, turmeric, the different type of roots, ginger. He's granted us the herbs of the earth, all right, for to be meat for us. Keep in mind, before we were able, before we were instructed to eat animals, we were instructed to eat plants, all right. Now, of course, it's lawful to eat clean animals, even on the Passover. It's a requirement that we eat of the lamb. Um, but the point is. The herbs are more better are, are 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 better for you than animals, all right. Than the flesh of of creatures. That's why Daniel. Matter of fact, let's get that. I wasn't planning on getting it, but let's get that in Daniel because Daniel changed his diet when he was a captive in Babylon. Would you have Aishab in the Hebrew for herb, which herb herbage, grass, green plants, all right. So, um, but let's get that scripture in, I believe it's Daniel, Daniel 5, I was reading it the other day, Daniel actually, he changed his diet into a herb-based diet, and he, he, he became healthier because of that, all right, um, Let's see. Now we're not saying I'm not saying that you have to be a vegetarian or a vegan, but it'll, it'll it'll actually help you. You know, I'm not a vegetarian or vegan, but I do abstain from meats for certain portions of time, and sometimes 
you know, and I always try to eat when I do eat meat, eat uh, a clean cut, you know, a respectable meat, you know, or, or meat from a good source and of course lawful. All right, but let's see. It says, uh, no, that's too far. Um, I believe it's Daniel, probably Daniel 2. Let's see here. No, it's Daniel 1, I think. All right, yeah, this is Daniel chapter one. Let's one and um, I start at verse 10. All right, let me turn that off. It says, and the prince and the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my Lord, the king who has appointed your meat and your drink for why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort. Then shall ye make me in danger. Then shall, I, then shall ye make me in danger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days. And let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. And pulse is going to herbs. It's like beans, which is a herb. Let's see here. All right. Uh, um, um, Zarayan. I don't know why it's uh, that, that word in Hebrew is, is Zarayan. All right which is what vegetables all right vegetables all right so basically he took a, a vegan based diet or a vegetarian based diet all right so he says um it says prove thy servants Verse 12, it says, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them ten days. And at the end of the 10 days, their countenances appear fairer, which means more beautiful um, and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. And this is the king's meat. So you have to keep in mind the meat in that day, it wasn't defiled. It wasn't any GMOs. The king's meat would probably have been the best finely cooked, um, you know, the best, most, health, most healthy animals in the province, you know, but that verse, the um, I'm pretty sure they was eating the foul meats. Don't get me wrong. I'm pretty sure they was eating, you know, meat sacrificed to idols and pork and so on and so forth. But, you know, the point is, I'm going to continue. It says, it says, uh, it's like, yeah. Start at verse, okay. verse 16. It says, Thus Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. Right, because the vegetables was better for them. Because the vegetables are medicines. All right, the herbs, Aisha, Zion, they're, they're medicine to the body. All right. So, um, it's a, uh, oh, it's a, oh, a Greek philosophical quote, which I've heard that it was by, um, um, 
you know, they said, let thy, thy food be thy medicine. I've also heard that he didn't actually say the, the quote. It was no actual records of that. Nevertheless, it's a, it's a, it's a good quote at that. Um, I believe they said Socrates said it, but I've also read into it where it said that there's no evidence of him saying that. But the point is, um, you should let your food be your medicine. That's still a, a, a legitimate statement, you know. Um, let's see here. Let's go to um, the book of Psalms. Uh, Psalms one hundred four and fourteen it said he causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man. So the herb is here for the servitude of man. And a lot of, you know, that's why you want to get up on game on a lot of the herbs that's around you. A lot of these things that you see in your yard or on the side of the street and you look at it as weeds, they actually have a lot of great um, medicinal benefits. Um, like the common, um, what is it? Like uh, you'll see wild lettuce. Um, um, was it uh, pre, pre, peri wrinkle is a good one? Um, uh, what is that plant? It's common. I, it slips my mind. Oh yeah, chick. I think it's was it chickpea, uh, something of that nature. Common chickpea or something of that nature. But the point is, there's a lot of great plants out there at our disposal. But Esau Edom will want you to go through him to be healed and. We're coming to, and that's never really worked. Esau is a, a warlock. And he uses um, magical, mystical potions, and you do have witches. Certain witches they use holistic remedies, but Esau, in the pharmaceutical world, they use um, they use magical uh, chemical concoctions, all right, which is not what we're supposed to be taking. We're supposed to be utilizing the earth to heal us, you know. Um, let's see here. It says that he may bring forth food out of the earth. See? So the herbs was made for the service of man. All right. Aibada serves labor, service. All right. Okay. Let's go to second Ezra's. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 7. And this scripture is it's a two-fold scripture. I'm going to data with the, the second fold um, because, uh, you know, it, it's going more into um, the spirit of things and the fruit of, of, the, of the understanding and the commandments of God. But I'm going to apply it as a literal sense, dealing with um, herbs. So this is 2nd Ezra chapter 7, verse 53. It says, And that there should be showed a paradise whose fruit endureth forever. Now, that, we know that's going into the kingdom and the wisdom and understanding of the kingdom, the commandments, um, and the works of the kingdom. But I'm going to apply it to, I'm going to literally apply it to vegetation. It says, Wherein is security and medicine. So the Lord is comparing fruit to medicine. So that should show you that these different fruits have medicinal benefits. And the fruits are there um, to, for medicine to heal you. Like pomegranate, which is great for your blood, beets, uh, you know, ginseng, good for your respiratory system, and mushrooms, different type of mushrooms, good for your immune system and your brain, calamus good for your brain you know different herbs have different purposes you know so um 
Let's see here. Let's go to um, Revelations. Real quick. I'm going to precept that, actually. And the precept that I'm going to pull is, like I said, this is a twofold scripture. It's really going into um, the spiritual... Uh, 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 this is it's really... Uh, um, this is a metaphor more so. Um, it's figurative language, but I'm going to apply it literally for the um, sake of edification, dealing with herbs. So this is Revelations 22 and 2. It says, In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits. Now this is talking about the celestial... Um, commandments in the heaven this this the star formations which uh, is going into the symbolism of um the 12 tribes of israel and also the commandments of god all right but i'm going to apply it to fruit or excuse me to literal trees and literal fruit it says and there the tree of life which bear twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Right. So the Lord is comparing leaves to, you know, constituents that heal people. You know? Now we know that the leaves that this is talking about directly is talking about the commandments. And then the priesthood, the, the people of God, because we also are, a, that's also going to who we are as the Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel being the fruit that is being bared. But, you know, that's, you know, the point is vegetation was granted to us for the healing of man. All right. So I'm going to finish it off. I don't know why Revelation looking like that. Okay, there we go. I'm finishing off with Sirach. Ecclesiasticus chapter 38. All right, verse 4. It says, The Lord have created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not abhor them. Right. So the different medicines that came out of the earth are um or excuse me the the medicines came forth out of the earth you know so you know all all sorts of medicines like you know even you know Esau he he criminalizes well he's a hypocrite he'll criminalize um the the cannabis plant but at the same time he'll sell it it's hypocrisy but you know even the cannabis plant with some brothers, they they might feel a certain way about it, but you know when you go in and you actually study the um, the science of of the plant, it's actually been shown like the recent recent it's great it's a great inflammatory uh, anti-inflammatory, but it's actually been shown to um actually uh, reverse the symptoms of Alzheimer's. You know, not smoking it like you know you're not supposed to smoke it, but like if you're using it as a tincture form or as in the tea form something of that nature it's actually it's it's been shown to take the plaque off of Alzheimer's patient's brain and clear that plaque off off the brain you know it's a it's a neural uh it's a, a herb that's that's great for your neural health you know and it's actually been proven that what well actually I was speaking to a, a herbalist the other day and he prescribed some CBD to a patient that had Alzheimer's or dementia, and the individual, after taking it for a certain amount of time, began to start remembering different people around them and remember a lot of things that they had long time forgotten. So, you know, the herb, that's why the scripture says, the Lord have created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not abhor them. You're not going to get caught up by the witchcraft and the sorcery that Esau just because Esau might say something is right or wrong, or just because Esau might utilize it incorrectly, you know, I you know witches use sage and frankincense, but at the same time, the Lord, you know, we that's also also a part of our culture to use 
frankincense and myrrh and different incense, you know, for different medicinal and spiritual purposes. So he that is wise will not abhor them. So brothers, you know, really get into the herbs, you know, you know, put your body on the level, you know, because that's going to increase your spirit, you know. So um, your Lord willing, this lesson was edifying, giving all praise unto you. How about Shimei Shalom.